So how do we add a new work resource type? Well, pretty much in exactly the same way we add a new material resource type, but with a few changes in the settings. So let's take my bedroom file and we need to change to the resource sheet, which I'm going to do from the view ribbon and then resource sheet. So I can then import my work resources. So I come across to resource name because the first column, the indicator column, I can't actually directly enter any information in there. And I'm going to need a plumber. What type? Well, it's work and it defaults to work. You'll see you can choose the other two types there anyway. Now with a work type resource, the material column is not available. Our initials, again, it just takes the first letter so you can make the initials whatever you would like them to be. They may even be the person's initials if your work types are actually individually named people. I'm going to put PL for plumber. The group is an optional text field for me to allow to group some of my resources together. That works quite well if your work resources are named individuals, then you can group them as plumbers, decorators, joiners. Now we then have the maximum available, and by default, this is displaying in percentages. Because my work resources tend to be individuals, they tend to be people, then I'm going to change the setting here from percentages to actual units. And in order to do that, I need to go into the options. So I go to File, Options. Schedule. Come down to this little section here that says show assignment units as A and they're defaulting there to a percentage. I would like to see them as a decimal. OK, and that way we see one rather than 100%. Now, if I need two plumbers, I simply change that to two rather than 200%. Then the standard is the standard hourly rate. Not necessarily hourly rate, you can see it's defaulted to slash HR, but we can actually quote per day per week, per year even in here, even though you cannot put years in the task duration. So for my plumber, I'm going to put $300 per day. So slash D, same abbreviations you use when entering tasks. I'll just widen that column slightly so I can see it. Is there an overtime rate for our plumbers? No, nope, they're not going to get any overtime options. Is there a cost per use? So is there an admin fee? No, nope. but you could put one in. These two columns are available. How are our costs accrued? Well, I'm going to leave them at pro rata. So as the plumber, or one of the two plumbers that I've got there is used, the costs are calculated on an ongoing basis. We then have the calendar for this particular individual. So their base calendar is the standard calendar. And we look at calendars in a lot more detail, but by default with your installation of project, each project has three calendars, a 24 hour shift calendar, a night shift calendar, or a standard calendar. So we'll stick with the standard for now, bearing in mind we can alter these and create our own calendars. And then we have the simple code column that we had in the material section, it just allows us to put a reference number in that could potentially map to another piece of software. Now, just like the materials, if I double click a resource name that is a work resource, I get the resource information where I can see more information as well as the columns already listed. So I can see the group, I can see the code, but I can also add in the email. So my plumber, if he's a named individual, could have an email address. I can put in the availability of this particular plumber, or I could put one unit available from X date to X date and another unit available from X date to X date. I can put costs in. And I can see the default cost I've already added, which is $300 per day. I could put more effective dates. So from April, their rates go up. So from the 1st of April, it's going to be available at $350 per day. But still no overtime and no cost per use. There's a notes section. Allow me to add in additional notes. Use Plumbing Services Inc. And then there is even a custom fields option for us to create our own fields. But we'll stay with the three main tabs, General, Costs and Notes. Any changes I then make are saved when I click OK. And because I've added a note, a little note appears in the Indicators column. Notes, Use Plumbing Service Inc.
I then come down and enter my second resource, so my second work resource. Notice that now I've added a resource on line one. The ID has appeared, we have a one. So our second resource will be a joiner, a work resource, can't type in the material column, the initials, let's go for JO, maximum available, well, we're only going to have one available to us, and they're going to earn $25 per hour. No overtime, no cost per use, pro rata and standard calendar. Straightforward data entry of our joiner. Let's do one more. So it's a work resource, something that's going to be paid on a time-based rate rather than a unit-based rate. Decorator, work resource, abbreviated to DEC, four available at $20 per hour. No overtime, no cost per use, pro rata, standard calendar. So that's adding a work resource type. Simply enter in the columns that are appropriate for a work resource. Any additional information can be entered into the resource information box, which we access by double clicking. Obviously, you have to be a little bit careful that your double click doesn't take you into a box that is editable. So let's double click in here, because that one's not editable. And that brings up resource information dialog box for us to edit or add additional information.